All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to explore um, further what uh, NNN nodes are, how the workflows work together, and I'll give you an introduction of how to create your first step and add different nodes together or different apps together and connect them to be able to go further and create different automations, workflows, or AI agents. Before we get started, make sure you have watched the previous videos because this is kind of a continuation of that. All right, so. So we're back to our canvas. This is our test workflow as we built in the previous uh, video. So we're going to go ahead and add our first step. So nodes are the building blocks of NNN. You can think of it that way, right? There's three categories of nodes. There's the entry point node, there is the function node, and then there's the exit point node. So there are different types of node in it and there's triggers that are basically your entry points. There's actions and apps, which we'll talk about, which are kind of the functions. And then there's um, nodes that are related to data transformation, to flow, to files, um, and many, many more advanced nodes, including AI nodes. So the, f the way to add nodes into your canvas or into your workflow is you can click on the middle button right here or you can come here on the top right hand corner and as you can see it says open notes panel right so you can do that or click on this it will take you to the same place okay so once you do that this is it's going to open up because this is the first step it's going to immediately take you to a place where it says what triggers this workflow because a trigger is the first step that will start your workflow there are several types of triggers there's the manual trigger there's on an app event there's on schedule, on webhook call, there's on form submission, and again, depending on what you're building, these different triggers will be relevant to your workflow. So for example, if we just want to build a test workflow, we can click on trigger manually, and this will automatically add that node into the center of our canvas. And now we can move this. So you can move a node around by holding it, clicking on it and holding it, and you can move it around. So what this does is basically means that whenever you click the test workflow here, this workflow, the first step or this trigger is going to get initiated on the top right here. As you can see, these three dots, you can click on that. You can test this step from here. You can rename this node. You can deactivate it. You can copy and paste it or you can delete it. And the shortcut here is also that you can delete this node right from the top right there. So. And on our left hand side, as you can see, this kind of identifies already that this is a trigger node. And if we click on, if we put in another node, you will see that it will always have this little lightning sign, which means that this node is a trigger node. So let's go ahead and get rid of that and add another trigger node. So on the right hand side, again, you can see all these nodes that are existing. So let's say you were building a chat bot, right? Let's say you're building a AI agent that you're going to utilize with chat, which means that you can embed this into a website. You can click on a chat chat um, a note and this will be your first trigger. So same thing on the bottom, as you can see, it says when chat message received, meaning that this is going to be your trigger now. And on the bottom right here, as you can see, this chat uh, appears next to the test workflow. And again, same thing on the left hand side, you can see the trigger button here, meaning that this is going to be your first note to trigger your workflow. On the right hand side, so this is where you can connect nodes to this particular node, right? So when you click on it, it's going to be the equivalent of same as going right here and clicking on it, meaning that once you click on this directly, this will now open up what happens next, right? That's what gives you um, and it then gives you flow that tells you, hey, add another node because we have already had a trigger. So it already recognizes that. So now we can add additional triggers. So now we can do action in an app, meaning we can uh, do something in an app with services like Google and all sorts of other native integration it already has with uh, NADN. So these are going to be all of the apps that are already there that already exist within NADN. So you can add any of it. So for example, let's say I want to add a Gmail note, I could either scroll and find that particular app that I'm looking for, or the fastest way to do this is just quickly search here, right? So if I search for Gmail, I can add that Gmail note. And now further, it's going to give me options of, okay, what kind of a Gmail node do you want this to be? So it really gives you a more specific. So for example, if you want to send a message, you can click on send a message. And now, as you can see, it will automatically open that node. So let's go ahead and get out of this. And as you can see right now, it is uh, the next step that got attached to this to this previous trigger node. And I can move this around and it shows you that 
this node is attached to this previous step okay so the way to delete this same thing you can either come here delete this node from here or if you want to remove this connection you can come and click on this uh, remove connection right here so let's go ahead and get rid of this now if i want to add let's say um not a not an app but i want to be able to add something to transform the data that i'm receiving from this chat message for example i can click on data transformation and this will open up all of the data transformation nodes that are available within n8n uh, you can add code to it you can add date and time edit field this is a very very useful tool that we'll go into in detail in later videos but you can modify add or remove different items that are coming in from your previous node you can do uh, different types of filtrations you have uh, spreading out of the data you can filter a data based on a condition you can merge you can aggregate so they're really really great uh, nodes that they already have when it comes to transforming your data or data transformation you can have a flow uh, you can click on the flow um, node group which basically gives you all of the popular nodes that are within that category so you can look loop over items you can filter you can merge items and then obviously these other ones that are there as well there's obviously the core and the advanced AI and these are uh, kind of the complicated ones but for now we will not focus on this because again this is kind of an introductory video for now and you can always add another trigger to this as well but that's not really common uh, but let's go ahead and actually add another node so that way I can introduce uh, what the canvas is and what the inside of this node looks like so let's click on uh, data and transformation or like I said I could always just if I already know which node I want to add, I can quickly search this node as well. So let's say I want to search for data. So once I do that, all of the nodes that are related to data will show up and I can go ahead and select whatever I want. So let's say, uh, so this customer data store um, is a an end training node, which is great because this gives you some pre-populated data that's already inside it so that way you can interact with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and click on get all people. And now, as you can see, it quickly added this uh, to my trigger here. If I click on chat on the right hand side on the bottom here, uh, this will open up my chat window where then I can send some form um, of a data into that particular node. So let's say I want to send a data called, let's say hello. So if I click on that, as you can see, now you will see that this node executed a um, chat message saying hello, and this outputted the node. So that's another uh, really cool thing from the N8N's user interface is that you can see the data that's coming in from different nodes just from the outside and how much data is coming in, right? So from here, I'm saying, hey, one item is being, it's coming in from um, this chat node, it's being outputted and, and, and it's being sent to my other node that's attached to it. And, the, uh, and from this node, there's five items coming in. So let's go ahead and click on this node. The way to get inside a node is you can double click in, into it and it will open up this node and what's inside of it. But before I do that, actually, let me go ahead and um, get rid of the data that's coming in here just so we can start from scratch there. So if I want to remove the data that's got initiated from these different nodes, I can come in the bottom here and if I click on this little um, delete button, it's going to delete the execution or it says at the bottom deletes the current execution data. So if I do that, now I'm back to blank, meaning nothing is being outputted from these uh, nodes. So let's go ahead and double click on this. And here, this is the the inside of a node if you think about it that way so in the middle here this i can move this thing around meaning this is the node that i'm currently interacting with the input so this is going to be coming in from my previous node and the output is going to be the output of the current node that i'm in right so my previous node i can click on execute and this is going to execute the previous node which in our case is going to be our chat node I can also click on this left hand side in the corner. If I go back here, I can see it here in the little corner here. I can click on it and it will take me to the previous node as well, right? So you can always go back and forth between nodes when they're connected. But I can go ahead and double click on this. So these are the different parameters and the settings for this particular node. We don't have to worry about settings in most of the nodes. Most of the nodes, we're going to be interacting with the parameter. So the operation for this particular node is because this is a training and it training uh, node, it means that it's just going to output um, a list of people 
or a list of one person. So if I uh, operation, if I select the get one person, and if I click on test step, this is gonna output this result right here. Okay, so let me go ahead and move this on the left hand side here. And as you can see on the left hand side here, it says when chat message received through that trigger, no fields, um, because there is nothing coming out of that input uh, from my previous node. So on the right hand corner here, and same thing by the way, on the right and left, you can see that there's the schema view, table view, and JSON view. So let's go ahead and take a look on the right hand side because we have some data on our output. So this is currently our table output, meaning that this is gonna show all of the data that's being outputted from this particular node in a table format, right? So it's gonna give you basically the columns and the rows with the names on the column names on top here. So I have one piece of data that came in or one row of data that came in from this uh, operation or the, from the output of this node and it's showing me in the table format. There's also the JSON view. So the JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. That's a JSON uh, data format. You can see it in the JSON view, which it shows you in a really neat and uh, cool way if you want to be able to interact with this from a, a JSON view. And then there's the schema view. So this is where you can see the output in the schema mode. And we'll talk about that in a little bit and why the schema node is extremely useful when you're connecting different nodes together. So let's say I wanna output some more data. Let me go back to my table view here. I can click on get all people and this limit says five but it's actually only five even if you add more into this uh, it's only going to output five because that's kind of the default so let's go ahead and test this i'm going to click on test step and as you can see now i have this five piece of data that got outputted and again i can see this right now in the table view because it's showing me nice and neat the column names the rows and then the data that's inside this and again, I can always click on the JSON. I will be able to see the JSON view here and then also the schema as well. Okay, so if I wanna get out of this node, I can always click here and come back and see my canvas view. And as you can see right now, it says five items are being outputted from this particular node. And same thing again, I can always double click on it and change this uh, format. And let's say I want to uh, delete this and start with my trigger node and i want to send a piece of data through this so i'm going to go ahead and say again hello now if i double click on this node now i can see on the left hand side here this is the data that's coming in from the previous node so i'm looking at it in the schema view um, and i can always take a look at it from a table view or the json view as well so as you can see this is the input that's coming in and this is the output that's coming in or coming out from this particular node okay and the operation of the canvas or the node itself in n8n is always from left to right so you're going to be moving from left to right when you're building a workflow it's always going to go from left to right meaning that all of the inputs are going to be coming in from the left hand side and the output's going to be on the right hand side all right, so this video has gone long enough. Let's go ahead and stop this for now. On the next video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on this particular workflow and we'll add a few, no few more nodes and I'll show you how to drag or grab data from the input and uh, do something with that data and therefore um, have a output that's going to be related to the input data that will be coming in from the previous node from us. Okay, all right, I'll see you in the next one.